now we have the second form of the condition of integrability see the theorem a bounded function f is integrable on closed interval ab if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a partition p of closed interval ab such that upf minus lpf is less than epsilon see its proof first we'll prove its necessary part and then sufficient part in the necessary part we have a bounded function f integrable so the function is integrable therefore this condition is satisfied what is this condition that lower integral from a to b f dx is equal to upper integral from a to b f dx and this is your integration from f a to b f dx this is common notation so this is our function and f, f is bounded we need to prove this one that upf minus lpf is less than epsilon for necessary part see let us have epsilon a positive number since the upper and lower integrals they are infimum and the supremum of upper and lower sums earlier we have seen this this these definitions therefore there exist partitions p1 and p2 such that up1f is less than upper integral from a to b of dx plus epsilon by 2 it can be written as integral from a to b of dx plus epsilon by 2 this part we have done earlier and see here l p2f is greater than lower integral from a to b of dx minus epsilon by 2 it is written as a integral from a to b of dx minus epsilon by 2 this part also we have done earlier now we take p as the common refinement of p1 and p2 then p will be p1 union p2 this means this p contains all the points of p1 and p2 therefore upf will be less than or equal to up1f this we have done earlier which is less than integral from a to b of dx plus epsilon by 2 it will be less than lp2f plus epsilon and it will be less than lpf plus epsilon it this we have done earlier thus there is this partition p such that upf minus lpf is less than epsilon <coughs> see take this upf and less than or equal to lpf plus epsilon so lpf substitute this lpf to the left hand side so it will be upf minus lpf is less than epsilon so the necessary part is proved next the condition the sufficient part in this sufficient part we have we assume that this is less than epsilon and we need to show that the function f is integrable so let epsilon be any positive number and p be a partition for which upf minus lpf is less than epsilon this is our assumption for any partition p we know that lpf is less than or equal to lower integral a to b of dx which is less than or equal to upper integral a to b f dx which is less than or equal to upf this is from the basic definition so integral upper integral from a to b f dx minus lower integral from a to b f dx will be less than or equal to upf minus lpf on this inequality and this is your less than epsilon from our assumption so since epsilon is a non negative number and it is less than every positive number this here so this will be zero it means lower in, upper integral from a to b of dx will be lower integral from a to b of dx and this condition says that the function f is integrable so both parts we have taken and solved both parts necessary and sufficient condition now move to your next theorem or property you can say its properties integrability of this sum and difference of integrable functions means we have two functions f1 and f2 uh, then f1 plus f2 is integrable and f1 minus f2 is integrable with some conditions see here theorem 5 if f1 and f2 are two bounded and integrable functions on closed interval ab see both are bounded and both are integrable and the common interval is closed interval ab then f which is written as f1 plus f2 is also integrable on closed interval ab this f is sum of f1 and f2 and also integral from a to b f1 dx plus integral from a to b f2 dx this is equal to integral from a to b f dx this is our theorem so it is integrability of the sum let us see its proof 
clearly f is bounded on closed interval ab why because f1 and f2 are bounded and f is equal to f1 plus f2 therefore f will also be bounded on this closed interval ab now take a partition p of closed interval ab as x0 x1 x2 so on xn where this x0 is your a and xn is your b this is a partition and capital mi dash small mi dash these are the bounds of f1 in delta xi capital mi double dash small mi double dash these are the bounds of f2 in delta xi and this capital m and small i these are the bounds of f in this delta xi see capital m and small m these are supremum and infimum of f in delta xi so small m i dash plus small m i double dash it will be less than or equal to small m i which will be less than or equal to capital m i less than or equal to capital m i dash plus capital m i double dash now we multiply all by delta xi and add them so you will get lpf1 plus lpf2 lpf1 from this summation mi dash delta xi this is your lpf1 and summation mi double dash delta xi this is your lpf2 less than or equal to summation mi delta xi is your lpf less than or equal to capital m summation mi summation capital mi delta xi upf less than or equal to summation capital mi dash delta xi upf1 plus summation capital mi dash delta xi upf now take epsilon any positive number since it is given that f1 and f2 both are integrable therefore we can choose delta greater than 0 such that for any partition p with norm mu p less than delta we have these two inequalities what upf1 minus lpf1 less than epsilon by 2 and upf2 minus lpf2 less than epsilon by 2 this we have proved earlier thus for any partition p with norm mu p less than delta we have from 2 and 3 See here from the inequalities two and inequalities three, UPF minus LPF. See here, UPF minus LPF. It can be written as less than or equal to UPF one plus UPF two here, minus LPF one minus LPF two here. So take UPF one minus LPF one, which is less than epsilon by two, so it is less than epsilon by two, and UPF two minus LPF two. This is less than epsilon by two, so it is written here less than, uh, plus epsilon by two. So sum of both of them is epsilon. Means UPF minus LPF is less than epsilon. So, from our earlier two theorem, conditions of integrability, the function f is integrable. Thus, the function f is integrable. Now we need to prove the second part. Since our functions f1 and f2 both are integrable, and we have taken epsilon any positive number. Therefore, by Darboux's theorem, this Darboux's theorem we have done in our earlier classes. You can find it. in my youtube lecture also go to my youtube channel if any one of you has missed the class you can get all the lectures there subscribe after subscription you will get all the lectures automatically so by darboux's theorem there exists delta greater than 0 such that for all partitions p with norm mu p less than delta we have upf1 is less than integral from a to b f1 dx plus epsilon by 2 and upf2 is less than integral from a to b f2 dx plus epsilon by 2 this is from darboux's theorem we have done earlier also integral from a to b f dx is less than or equal to upf and which is less than or equal to upf1 plus upf2 from this two so it is less than integral from a to b f1 dx Plus epsilon by two plus integral from a to b f to d s plus epsilon by two epsilon by two plus epsilon by two equal to epsilon. So we have this part. Now since epsilon is arbitrary, so we conclude that integral from a to b f d x is less than or equal to integral from a to b f one d x plus integral from a to b f two d x. Again we proceed and take minus f one minus f two, and here for f. so it will be f will be minus f so in equality 5 will give you integration from a to b minus f dx less than or equal to integral from a to b minus f1 dx plus integral from a to b minus f2 dx now you will have minus all sides multiply by minus one all sides so this less than or equal to inequality it will become greater than or equal to and here all integrals will become plus see in the next page see 
integral from a to be f dx is greater than or equal to integral from a to be f1 dx plus integral from a to be f2 dx. So from 5 and 6 inequalities, 5 and 6, we get integration from a to be f dx is equal to integration from a to be f1 dx plus integration from a to be f2 dx. So both parts we have proved. First that if we have two functions f1 and f2, both are bounded and integrable on the closed interval AB, then there are some f1 plus f2 is also bounded and integrable on the closed interval AB. And also integral from a to be f dx is equal to integral from a to be f1 dx plus integral from a to be f2 dx. So this theorem is proved. In our next class, we will move on to another theorem, which says that if you have two functions f1 and f2, which are bounded and integrable on this closed interval AB, then f is equal to difference of f1 and f2 means f1 minus f2. It is also integrable on this closed interval AB. And we have integration from a to be f dx is equal to integration from a to be f1 dx minus integration from a to be f2 dx. So we will see it in our next class. Till then, you just note down all of them. And if you have any query, you just uh, give me a message.